Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. In this video, I had um, actually gotten some more parts from IC Station, so thank you guys so much for it. And so I'd asked them for, well, they'd sent over the vibration motors I've already done a video on. I'll uh, link down below to that. And uh, I have something really cool planned for that. I've already made a uh, prototype for a flip dot display, basically, using those. So they sent me those last time. And um, uh, they sent me uh, quite a number more, 30 extra ones, so I can complete all the digits for that. So if you want to see my review on those uh, motors and the links and all that, I'll post a video to my um, to the to the video that I, I, I've done on that specifically. And they sent me three extra things, uh, definitely really cool, that I, ha I have a couple ideas for projects for them. Um, so in this video though, we're going to be focusing on this guy, which is, um, it's product number 9080, uh, you know, asterisk one. And this is essentially a lithium battery charger. It's like one of these guys. Um, they sell these online and it basically has a USB for charging and the actual, um, USB output port as well. However, um, this guy, um, is essentially just a bare module. It's, it's very cheap. I'll show you the uh, website link in a second. But the good thing is this can be used for projects. So if you guys are thinking of building something that requires an internal lithium-ion battery, um, these batteries are kind of dangerous if you want to build your own charging circuitry. But if you get one of these chips that does all the protection for you, the charging, discharging, all that stuff it protects against, um, this is sort of ideal, especially given the price, and it has already the jacks pre-soldered. All you have to do is uh, just kind of hot glue it in place, and you're good to go and wire up a battery, and you're all set. So this is sort of a magical solution to adding a, a lithium-ion battery, which are known to kind of be a bit temperamental and kind of, you know, if you treat them badly and you don't use proper charging circuitry, they can, you know, ignite, set fire, explode, whatever you want to call it. So anyway... So yeah, um, let's go and take a look at the website before I actually do a demonstration of this. Okay, here we are on IC Station's website, and um, I'll have links down below for this site, um, specifically this part if you guys are interested in purchasing. And you can see here, um, originally it was $1.15, it's on sale actually for the next two days for $0.86, cents, which is ridiculous, that you can get a full dedicated charging circuit with you know all parts soldered with the jacks and everything included for less than a dollar with free shipping that's ridiculous i love the day and age that we live in so yeah um this takes you know all the worry out of out of making diy projects that use lithium batteries um and this can be wired to lithium polymer or lithium ion batteries and yeah you can see here this is a unit that i've received um it has a oops there <laughs> It has a charging LED actually on the unit itself, uh, which is really cool. So it'll give you sort of status when it's charging or discharging when the battery's um, you know dying. Uh, it'll let you know by flashing this light and I'll show you in a little bit. The battery that I have I'm pretty sure is charged so I, I'm not going to be able to show you it uh, when it dies but it basically just flashes to give you a warning. Um, so here you can see it uh, takes 3.7 volts to 5.5 volts in, but I'm just using a standard lithium uh, ion battery. This was pulled from a Bluetooth speaker, actually. And this is 3.7 volts, 7.96 watt hours, which is 2150 milliamp hours. Uh, it can take pretty much any size as long as it's a single cell. Um, it can support uh, one ampere of max charging current. So this battery, which is uh, let's just say round it down to two amp hours. This would take two about two hours to charge, which isn't bad actually if you think about the energy density in in a 18650 cell like that. Um, and the output voltage it actually does output a it steps up the 3.7 volts and regulates it to a stable five volt output. So I can use this actually to charge my phone like its original intention, or any other five volt system, which is really cool because um, the problem with you know, using batteries as they die, the voltage drops, which most of the time isn't what you want in an electrical system. You want a stable, constant voltage supply right up until the end where the battery drops out. So this will do exactly that. And um, I have tested this. I've measured it. 
And yes, it does actually stop um, discharging the battery at about, I measured about 3, 3.0, 3.1 volts, some, somewhere around this. So it's very close to this. And that is, from what I've been reading, a, a, about like a, a standard voltage that, um, you know, uh, different papers suggest that you stop discharging a battery to prevent permanent damage. And so this is very important. Not all uh, charger boards will actually do this. Some will let you keep draining the battery until it hits zero, which is very bad for the battery because the next time you charge it up, um, it could actually have internal shorts or it could start heating rapidly. Or any number of very bad things. So this this takes care of you for it. So as long as you're using that uh, that USB output, the five volts, it'll cut that off right when it hits about three volts and it won't let you discharge the battery anymore until you recharge it, which is great. Um, and discharging efficiency, uh, it says it's about 85%. That's about you know reasonable for a, a small DC-DC converter, uh, depending on the load current. If you're drawing a very small current, like only, if you're drawing like maybe 10 milliamps from this five volt uh, DC output, you're probably gonna get somewhere around 60% efficiency. This is actually pretty reasonable if you're using this to drive kind of a heavy load like charging you know, a modern phone or something like that, that you're gonna be able to get as much energy, you know, a pretty good amount out that you put in when you charge the battery. So this would be something cool to maybe use in like a solar panel setup or where you need portable power, you can create an array of these batteries, just put a whole bunch in parallel, mind you, uh, make sure if you are going to make your own battery packs and you put them all in parallel that they have the same voltage. Otherwise, uh, that's going to go very bad. You're basically making a bomb <laughs> if uh, if that's not the case. But yeah, say you, you you can take apart laptops to get essentially these kind of batteries and uh, make a, a giant array and make like a you know, 10, 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack and just charge it up using this guy. And it'll take a while to charge, but... Um, that will pretty much last forever for, you know, most applications. You can make like a giant battery pack. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I'll talk about in a second what I'm actually going to use this for. Uh, it's something completely different. But yeah, it uh, shows you when it's charging and discharging uh, through the onboard LED. And um, yeah, it basically uses a power MOS for the protection um, to disconnect the battery if something goes wrong. Uh, I have checked also the termination voltage, and it is right on the dot at like 4.2 something volts. Uh, so that is definitely good to see that it doesn't overcharge your batteries. Um, I have not measured the standby current, but I've left this plugged in for like a week or two and haven't noticed an appreciable drop in the voltage. So yeah, 8 microamps sounds reasonable for that. Um, yeah, uh, intelligent temperature control. Yeah, there's thermal protection on the main IC, um, over voltage, short circuit, overload protection. That's all there. Um, yeah, it does a uh, trickle mode. That's interesting. Uh, this battery was kind of half charged, so I wasn't able to actually test that. But um, that is good to hear that it has trickle protection. So if the battery voltage is kind of low because it's been sitting on a shelf for a while, it'll start charging it slowly to make sure nothing's going wrong with the battery and then it'll increase um, the current once it gets kind of into a safe voltage range. Uh, because the worst thing you can do is if you don't know a condition of a battery, if it's damaged or not, the worst thing you can do is just give it one amp and then hope for the best. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, um, I will provide links for this and let me do a demonstration now and uh, talk to you guys a little bit about what I'm going to actually put this in. Okay, so here I had actually, um, the Bluetooth speaker, I, I cut off uh, some of the cord on the other end so I can use this neat little socket so I can easily remove the battery for, you know, just ease of use. So let's just connect this and making sure when I solder this, I double, triple, quadruple check to make sure that, you know, the red wire is positive, the black is negative. Those are standards, but whenever soldering like a live battery to a circuit, always double, triple check. So all you, all I had to do was solder the B plus and B minus to the red wire and the black wire for a positive voltage of the battery and negative. The white wire is actually a thermal sensor that's built like right onto the battery. That's not strictly necessary unless if you're kind of using it under heavy conditions 
where the battery might be subjected to a lot of heat or it might be rapidly charged and discharged. But for this application at one amp at five volts out, it's not strictly necessary, honestly. It's just a safety precaution. So I just kind of trimmed, I snipped the wire off and I just kind of tucked it out of the way. Probably use some uh, heat shrink or something later. Um, but yeah, it's not strictly necessary for my application. So um, I have this hooked up to my computer. It's a micro USB cord. And we're just going to give this battery a tiny little bit of charge. So make sure we get the cord right way around. And you can see when you uh, plug it in, it does a slow flash uh, to let you know that it's uh, charging. And it, it'll sit here, and um, the LED will, will actually, um, I believe it goes solid once it's done fully charging, and then you just disconnect it, and it's good to go. So yeah, this is uh, sitting here and charging right now. Um, so let's do a discharge test, actually. So I'm pretty sure this battery is mostly charged up. I have my old uh, Galaxy S3 phone here. So let's see if it'll charge that. So put the uh, the end of the USB in. Put this guy in. You can see immediately the light came on and I just felt the phone vibrate. And you can see it's starting to charge. And it does that same animation sort of... Um, oh, the wire's a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. So yeah, it does that same kind of slow flash animation. And uh, you can see here my phone is charging right now, actually. Uh, so yeah, we're all good to go. Uh, I've noticed that during um, like charging like a smartphone that has like a pretty big battery in it, the uh, board will get warm. It won't get hot. Um, and if you, you know, as long as you leave a little bit of space around this, you don't drown it in hot glue, it'll be fine uh, for most applications. And so you can see here, I essentially just made my own battery bank using a battery I already had, uh, this chip, which only costs like not even a dollar now. And so, yeah, um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with this. So let me just disconnect that. And this will go solid, and eventually it'll time out when it detects that nothing's connected, and it'll shut off. Um, so that's pretty cool that there's no extra buttons necessary to turn it on and off manually. So let's just move my phone out of the way. And, yeah, so you can see it just shut off right there. So, yeah, this is actually pretty nifty. So what I am going to use this for is actually a project that I've been working on for quite a while, and it's a night vision camera, <laughs> which sounds kind of weird, but... Um, so I got this little tiny camera off eBay. It's a composite video camera, and I have uh, video goggles that I bought off eBay as well a long time ago. And so what I planned on doing was I, I have already removed the IR filter uh, from the front of the camera, so it, it can basically see in very low light, and if you use an infrared light... Uh, like an infrared LED, you can see in pitch black, and it's it's absolutely awesome. <laughs> uh, I don't really have a practical need for this, but it's just so cool that I kind of want to make one. Uh, the problem is the the LCD and the camera both run off 5 volts, but this battery is only 3.7 volts. So I would need a boost converter, so I had, um, I'd searched through IC Station's website to see what they had, and I found this, it com it does both the battery charging and the uh, step up. Some of the boards only do battery charging or only do, you know, the boost converter, but this does both of them uh, for a very cheap price. So I, I instantly asked them if, if I could have a, a review sample of this guy um, because it's essentially two functions in one, uh, which is exactly what I need. So basically this is going to provide five volts out. I'm just going to desolder this uh, USB connector since it's not necessary, cut a hole in my case, uh, for the micro, so you can plug in a regular micro, mount it to the um, the actual case right up against the wall, and just solder the positive wires out to um, the rest of my circuitry. So everything runs off of 5 volts, which is awesome. So all I really need to do is put a switch in line with the positive output of the USB port. And uh, that can turn on and off the entire system. And, yeah, ju just looking at the capacity of this battery, this is actually a pretty beefy battery, so it should be able to run for pretty pretty long. And whenever I need to recharge it, you know, everything's built in. It's, it's very convenient. So I'm going to make something probably handheld size, like sort of like a little camcorder almost thing, and this will sit in the bottom. This will be towards the back. There'll be an eyepiece here out in the back. And in the front, there'll be like a little lens protrusion with the actual uh, CCD um video camera hanging out the front. And another thing that I've I've ordered from them 
is actually uh, this guy. It's hard to see here. It's a 850 to 860 nanometer LED. And I, I've currently wired it and I started testing it. And I'll do a, another video on that separately of me playing around with that. Once I get the camera hooked up, I'll do some uh, night videos of, of showing how bright this guy uh, can get. Because this is actually a, a, it's a multi-watt package LED. So that should be able to easily light up an entire room. Uh, with infrared that, you know, our eyes can't see, but the camera can. So anyway, that'll be in a future video, and I'll do, I'll do a separate review on that guy as well. Um, so yeah, um, other than that, uh, they also sent me another module, which I will be talking about um, in another, another video related to my uh, Game Boy touch sensor project, and this is the touch sensor. So that's sort of two different projects I have going on, the Game Boy project on one hand, um, and I'm currently actually um, sp speaking to a couple companies about bringing that to market as a kit. Uh, I've been working along with uh, Rourke from Rourke's Retro Corner uh, in order to, um, you know, for him to provide installation for you guys if you guys are interested in buying pre-modded ones. But I've also wanted to sell them as a kit so that anyone who has a Game Boy that you know, um, maybe wants to save a little bit of money or maybe is more a DIY spirit can go and install it themselves and that would be really cool. So I'm working with a couple companies. I'll let you guys know specifically. But uh, one really cool thing is if you wanted to get a pre-modded Game Boy from Rourke, um, he actually gave me a discount code that I'll be putting down low, uh, below in the description. So if you enter that, um, you can get a little bit off of the uh, price of admission for one of my modded Game Boys. So uh, if you guys are so inclined, I'll, I'll put them in uh, the descriptions of my uh, future videos. So you can uh, definitely use that and that might be able to save you a little bit of money. Um, so yeah, anyway, I've rambled on for long enough. I'd like to thank IC Station um, sending me a lot of stuff. I've been rather busy lately. Um, and so I haven't really been able to make a lot of videos, but um, I'm gonna be making kind of these shorter well, I say shorter style. I've been rambling for 17 minutes. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to make kind of separate videos from now on as opposed to the mailbag videos, which usually take me kind of quite a bit longer to do uh, because I'm trying to review four products at once, which you know, is kind of difficult to do within one video. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys liked the video, found this interesting. If you uh, do want to pick one up yourselves, I will have codes down below as well as uh, discount codes for IC Station. So you can get a little bit, uh, this actually cheaper than the listed price uh, if you use the discount code down below. And so anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye.